Okay, so we start the entire game off. You lay everything out, you got it all planned. The rule book will show you how the most optimal way to lay it out is, but mm -hmm. of course it's your game. You can lay it out however you like. Um, and then you have the storybook. It's a, you know, it's a thick book full of text. Because as much as Divinity Original Sin is about tactical combat and really cool character growth, the biggest draw, at least for me, yeah. is that the story is amazing. It's in depth and there's player agency. Major every, choice every choice, and consequence. choice you make oh. has far reaching meanings that may not be known to you. And there's lots of different ways that the story is going to impact how the game plays out. Right. Particularly because this is a big campaign game. You're going to play eight sessions. Each session is like you know, an hour to two hours, depending on how much you, you get done and yeah. bookmark your book. But then right. the campaign is eight sessions of that and a totally branching story depending on the decisions you make. There are at least four main endings. That's right, four. four. You can play the game four times to get the, to get the full play to through. And that's assuming you end up that's in the same... That's 32 games. Yeah, and that's assuming you end up in the same place with the same exact path. Yep. It's not likely to happen. So the storybook here, for example, everything... Now pay attention when you're making decisions because the text, it's, it's narrative, it's fluffy, mm -hmm. but it even has clues as to what could happen yeah. or what happens in the story. And everything learning about the world, even if you find a location that has no gameplay effect, may give you information about decisions would you would make hidden later. hidden gameplay mechanics? Yeah, yeah maybe. Like, it's like just something that you would just not otherwise fluff through that could actually be integral to the yeah. story. The more you know about the setting and about what characters are up to and their backstories, the better armed you are. The to book make. is basically is basically choose your own adventure. There's a lot of choices that allow you to interact with the game. There's cards. Now the cards are important because the location yeah. cards are interactable as well, and they have story choices on mm -hmm. there that can take effect with the actual book and with the whole story in yeah. general. I mean, the two main parts of the game, combat's a big part, obviously, but alternating between the storybook and going to locations to explore those cards and read those stories. The game switches back and forth between those two very easily. Even even your characters, they have they have um, uh, keywords. keywords and stuff that interact yeah. with various parts of the location, which also can interact with your with kind of mm -hmm. choices you're allowed to make. I mean, when you're a adventure. noble, your interactions with people are different than if you're a scoundrel or a rogue or an outlaw. Or an outlaw like Sibyl here, Sibyl. who also yeah. has a lot of information in her story. So it's just story, story, story. You actually have a chance to interact three different ways throughout the entire game, and all of those combinations change the course of the game as you play. And that agency is huge. You could ignore something for one round and result in an entire village being burnt down yep. or innocents being killed. And now that has to weigh in on you. And so that is player agency. It is a book chock full of story. Yeah. This is great. Thanks okay. for watching.